بسم الله والحمد لله والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومولاه ما بعد This is our seventeenth lesson for Kalam من كلام خير الأنام صلى الله عليه وسلم أوثب عبد الغني المقدسي رحمه الله تعالى وستين كتاب الطهارة and we arrived at باب التيمم التيمم linguistically refers to القصد intent تيممت الشيء أي قصدته I intended something and in the Sharia, it refers to مسح الوجه واليدين. It is to wipe over the face and the hands. من الصعيد الطيب. From pure earth. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فتيمموا صعيدا طيبا. From pure earth. From pure soil. بدلا عن الطهارة بالماء. It is a substitute for purifying oneself with water عند تعذر استعماله. When the water cannot be used. And the water cannot be used. And so we find that the asl is al taharatu bil ma. So when a person wants to uplift himself and come with the definition of tahara, which is raf' al hadith wa izalat al khabith, in order for a person to come with raf' al hadith, then he needs to do it with water. That is the asl. But if someone can't use water, for whatever reason it may be, or there is no water, then the substitute is to use or to perform a tayammum and it is from the specific acts that his ummah has been given i.e. tayammum that no other ummah has been given and it is a form of mercy and a form of virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon this ummah the Musannif Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi rahimahullah ta'ala he brought three hadith in this chapter the first of which being an Imran ibn Husayn radiyallahu anhu أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رأى رجلا معتزلا لم يصلي في القوم فقال يا فلان ما منعك أن تصلي في القوم قال يا رسول الله لا أصابتني جنابة ولا ماء فقال عليك بالصعيد فإنه يكفيك عمران بن حسين رضي الله عنه he narrates that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he saw a man who had secluded himself from the people and he did not pray with them so he said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم oh man يا فلان what prevented you from praying with the people? So the messenger, uh, so the man replied, Oh messenger of Allah, أصابتني جنابة I fell into the state of janaba, which we highlighted in previous lessons, what janaba means, sexual impurity. And in this case, the man had a wet dream. And so he ejaculated and had a wet dream. And there is no water. So what should I do? So I, I didn't know what to do. So essentially I secluded myself from the people and I didn't pray with them. And so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, advised him with As-Sa'id, عليك بالصعيد Upon you is to use As-Sa'id, I perform a tayammum That is enough, فَإِنَّهُ يَكْفِيكَ That is sufficient for you This hadith, Imran ibn Hussain It's a summarized hadith, Rahul uh, Bukhari From a longer hadith Where the Messenger of Allah وسلم, led the people in Fajr prayer Whilst they were on a journey And so he then saw Abu Sara Ra'a A man who had secluded himself from the group and so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, asked him what had prevented him from praying with the Jama'ah. And so the man informed him that he had fallen into the state of Al-Janaba. And he couldn't find a water, he couldn't find any water to wash himself or to perform the ghusl with. فلم يصلي. And so he didn't pray because he was in the state of Janaba. And uh, some ulama rahimahumullah ta'ala they mentioned that the reason why he didn't pray with the people is because he thought that tayammum wouldn't be enough of a, it wouldn't be sufficient um sufficient enough for al ghusl as a replacement for al ghusl so here the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded him to perform the tayammum and that he informed him that that is enough tayammum is enough of a replacement for the water as long as there is no water and so the man he performed tayammum and then he prayed then uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam They continued on their journey, right? And the people complained to him about being thirsty And so the Messenger of Allah sent a man to go and seek the water And so then the man brought the water And uh, the people were called and they drank from the, from the water uh, And they, they drank themselves and they, and they also uh, gave their camels and, their, and their, the riding beasts also water to drink Then at the end the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He gave the man who had the janaba before He gave him a utensil filled with water And he said Idhab fa'afrighu alayk Idhab and wash yourself And pour yourself with that water I perform the, the ghusl 
And so we learn many benefits from this hadith. The first benefit being that the safar lies qid salat al jama'ah. That the person who's on a journey, the congregational prayer does not fall. Uh, the obligation of the congregation prayer does not fall away uh, from a person who's on the state of journey. Rather, whether you're on the journey or not, you should always pray in jama'ah. Number two, the one who is the leader of the army or the one who is the leader of the group should always ask if he finds a person secluded from the group, why has he secluded from the group? Because from Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnah believe Luzumul Jama'a, that you have to stay together, unified. So if you find someone secluding himself, you have to go and seek the reason why he is secluding himself. And that is from the job of the Amir, from the Muhammad of the leader of that group. Number three, Jawaz al the permissibility of a tayammum when a person is in a state of janaba. Jawaz al tayammum yani al janaba yani the faqd al ma. Ida lam yajid al ma. The permissibility of a person to perform tayammum from the state of janaba if he doesn't find water. Another benefit, and the tayammum may yudzi yani al ma. The tayammum is sufficient, it's a sufficient replacement for the water. And it takes its place uh, until he finds water. So tayammum takes the place of water wherever you find. Or oh, in whatever case it may be, whether it be minor uh, hadith or major hadith, until a person finds water. So when the person finds water, as we find in the hadith, take this water and wash yourself with it. And so we find that the person who performs tayammum due to there not being any water, then he finds water. It becomes obligatory upon him to purify himself with that water. So, if a person uh, was on a journey, if a person was on a journey and he fell into the state of Janaba and he didn't find water and so he performed the tayammum then he reaches his destination and he finds water or he finds his water before reaching his destination then he it becomes wajib upon him to perform the ghusl it becomes wajib upon him to perform the ghusl due to the hadith of Umar al-Husayn radiyallahu an uh, another benefit we learn from this hadith is that the person doesn't have to repeat the prayer that he prayed whilst performing the tayammum so the fajr of the prayer that the person performed when he did the tayammum, he doesn't have to repeat it once he finds water. So when he finds water and performs ghusl, he doesn't have to go back and repeat the fajr prayer. Now, and of course we find, of course, the, another main benefit from this hadith is عِنَايَةٌ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ That the Messenger of Allah was deep in care, had deep care for his companions, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do so. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ By going after their affairs, uh, taking care of them when they when they complain about thirst uh, by see, sending a man to look for water, go search for water, find water, bring it back and then give it to the people. And then also he didn't forget his companion who had fell into the state of Janaba earlier on and he told him and he gave him the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning, concerning this issue. Now, so that's a brief summary of what we can gain from this hadith. The next hadith is وعن عمار بن ياسر رضي الله تعالى عنه قال بعثني رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في حاجة فأجنبت فلم أجد الماء فتمرغت في الصعيد كما تمرغ الدابة ثم أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو كما تتمرغ الدابة Here there's one time missing ثم أتيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فذكرت له فقال لإنما كان يكفيك أن تقول بيديك هكذا ثم ضرب بيديه الأرض ضربة واحدة ثم مسح الشمال على اليمين وظاهر كفيه ووجهه أخرجه أي رواه البخاري ومسلم عمار بن ياسر رضي الله عنه he narrates that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم sent him to do something for him he sent him to do something for him and whilst I was doing that I entered into the state of الجنابة I entered into the state of الجنابة and I didn't find water and I couldn't find water so what did he do فتمرغت I what did I do? I rolled around in the soil. I rolled around in the earth. The way that the uh, riding beast, the way that the animal rolls around the earth. The way that the animal rolls around the earth. Then what happens is that I came to the Messenger of Allah and I told him about what I did. And so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said to him, Enough for you was to do with your hands this. And so the Messenger of Allah hit the earth with his hand One hit Then he wiped his left I.e. his left hand From the bottom part So the left to the bottom part of the left hand The inner palm With his right 
uh, اليمين ظاهرة كفي نعم so what means here ومسحة ظاهرة كفي what meant here is that he took the inner so he so he smashed the the, the he hit the earth with the inner palm once then he took the left hand the inner left hand the inner left palm and he wiped it over the top of the right palm he wiped it over the top of the right palm and then he did the ne the next with his and he did he did the same thing with the right side on the left palm طيب then ومسح ثم مسح الشمال على اليمين وظاهرة كفيه ووجهه and then he wiped his his face وجهه أيضا وهي ومسح وجهه نعم صحب هنا فمن الحديث نمبر 1 إذا عمار بن ياسر رضي الله عنه The messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم sent him on a uh, quest and this quest was a سرية The messenger of Allah sent him at, at the head of an expedition and so uh, عمار بن ياسر was, being, was on that journey was on that expedition he entered into the city of Janaba and he didn't know how to perform the tayammu because the asr is that you when you enter into the third janaba to wash yourself with water ghusl but he didn't have water let me do the ma he couldn't find water and he didn't know how to perform the tayammum and so he found that a tayammum or he he, he he thought that the tayammum was that you ensure that the same way for the ghusl you ensure that all form of the water you ensure that all all parts all part the whole part of your body is touched by water he thought the same would apply for a tayammum so he applied what qiyas here and so what he did was he rolled in the in the dirt ensuring that all form of the all parts of the of his body is touched by the by the soil the way that all water should also touch all parts of your body sorry and so when he came to the prophet وسلم, he told him about what he had done and so to, the reason why he told him is to read to, to, to learn you know is this is this the correct way of doing it or is the incorrect way of doing it so the messenger of allah وسلم, clarified to him this and that which is correct is that you what you you hit the floor or the earth with your hand one hit not two not three one and then you take the inner palm of your hand uh, the and you wash uh, you wipe over the top part of the other hand and you do the same on the other side so he wipes the right the inner palm of his right with his left hand and he wipes his both both hands and the and the face and the and the face now and so that's the main benefit we learn from this hadith is bayanu to how a person performs the act of a a common mistake you find is that somebody would wipe their forearms that's not part of the tayammum you do not wipe the forearms in the tayammum rather you wipe the batin al you the zahir al kaf you wipe the zahir al kaf and the wajh now and the wajh now uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the Quran concerning the tayammum fatayammum sa'idan tayyiba famsahu bi wujuhikum wa aydikum min right whereas in this hadith what do we find we find that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he put the Masih of the hands before the Masih of the face. So how do we combine, or how do we reconcile between this verse, which places, so the wedge over before the face, and the Hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here. We say that the, uh, we say that the wedge is placed ahead of the face well the wedge is placed ahead of the hands now uh, because we said that the hadith here of Ammar ibn Yasir لا يلزم it does not necessitate a tartib whereas the ayah in surah al-ma'idah and likewise the many other hadith they show ماذا الترتيب فامسحوا بوجوهكم وأيديكم mean so the asl is that a person he wipes his face before wiping the hands he wipes his face before wiping the hands and we said it doesn't show a tartib the hadith here does not show 
uh, order or sequential order. So we learn this hadith. The main benefit we take, we take from this hadith is how to from the table, which is to wipe the face, to wipe the face, and we know the definition of the face, the boundaries of the face. Um, you wipe over the face and you wipe uh, the two hands, the both the right hand and the left hand, and you hit the earth with one hit, and the hitting occurs with the inner palm. Now. And the final hadith in this chapter is when Jabir ibn Abdullah radiyallahu anhu and the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "وأعطيت خمسة لم يعطهن أحد من الأنبياء قبلي نصرت بالرعب مسيرة شهر وجعلت العرض مسجدا وطمورا فأي ما رجل من أمتي أدركت الصلاة فليصلي وأحلت لي الغنائم ولم تحل ولم تحل لي أحد قبلي وأعطيت الشفاعة وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يبعث إلى قومه وبعث إلى الناس كافة." So here the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم is teaching us. Some of the specific things that he had been given, that no other prophet had been, been that, 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 that no other prophet had been given before him, and from that is that both this world, this earth, have been made for him a place of prayer and a place of purification. I.e., a person wherever the salah reaches him, he should pray. Wherever the salah reaches him, he should pray, and that if the person is in a state of uh, janab or is he needs to perform wudu and he doesn't have water. Then this earth has been made a a, a type of purification for him. I eat a tamu. Well, Jury let the real Ambu Masjid and Watahura, Watahura, I a place of purification. And of course, his world is either water or soil, right? This water, this earth is either water, sea, ocean, rivers, lakes, whatever, or soil. And so, both the mat and the Ambu, they're both things that we can use to purify ourselves with. So if you don't have any water, if you're in a land where there's no water, then you can use the earth to purify yourself in order to perform the salah. That's what this uh, hadith tells us. That's the main benefit we gain from this hadith. In that's related to our chapter of Abu And of course, there are other benefits. For example, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu was given victory with terror, uh, as we saw in the Ghazwa Tabuk. Ghazwa Tabuk, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi was given victory with terror, and likewise, uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi it was permitted for him. To have war booty to take the war booty, and also the messenger of Allah is given the shafa'ah, and he was sent to all of mankind. Whereas all the prophets before him were sent to a specific group of people. Hada wallahu alam. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.